Good afternoon. You're watching CBC News Network. I'm Dan Burrett in Vancouver. There's been yet another act of violence on transit in British Columbia's lower mainland, the third in three weeks in Surrey alone. Paramedics treated the victim on scene, then rushed him to hospital. He has since been released. He's said to be a man in his 20s. Transit police say he was stabbed in the ad abdomen. They don't know why it happened, and police are still looking for a suspect. This happened days after 17-year-old Ethan Bessflug was stabbed to death on a bus in Surrey. His family says he had told them he was being threatened. No one has yet been arrested in his death. For more on this, we're now joined by Kelly Sundberg. He is an associate professor of criminology in the Department of Economics, Justice and Policy Studies at Mount Royal University. We've reached him here in Vancouver. Professor, thanks for joining us. First of all, what do you make of yet another violent attack in and around Metro Vancouver's transit system? Well, it, it's absolutely tragic and my, uh, my thoughts go to the family of, of these victims and to, the, and to the one victim, of course. Um, but we're seeing these issues across our country and it's, it's not just limited to uh, transit nodes, um, but also into other public spaces. It's a real concern. Now, as we said, these sorts of incidents aren't confined to just this week or, or here in British Columbia and parts of, of Metro Vancouver over the past month. There's been a spike in, in reported violent transit attacks across this country. Why do you think that's happening? Well, my, my belief is, and I'm actually in Vancouver right now looking at, in part, looking at these, these issues. But what mm. I see is during COVID, we were all told to socially distance. Most of us were working from home um, we or studying from home. So a lot of our public spaces, in particular transit nodes, such as subway stations or train stations, transit exchanges, as well as other public spaces like libraries and rec centers. Uh, where, when when, a, when a, the, the majority of the population left these spaces during COVID, uh, this, this community of, of, of individuals who have nowhere to go, those who are living homeless, tend to, uh, they were there before, but they've come to dominate these spaces. And now that uh, we're all returning to public spaces, there's a social conflict that's, that's taking place. Mm -hmm. This has been floated, but what do you make of the idea of a national transit security task force to tackle this issue? Is that realistic in such a large country with such different issues in, in, in various provinces and territories? Uh, I think that a national task force that's focused on security in public spaces probably would be more... Uh, beneficial. I think that developing a network of municipal governments um, with support from provincial and federal authorities and governments would be would probably be the way to go. Uh, the problems are the same by and large from coast to coast and I think it's time that we we really take a close look from a bot broad spectrum. So I actually propose establishing uh, networks of experts um, and advisors across the country to help inform policies and strategies for addressing uh, this growing concern. The legislation brought by BC's transportation minister would allow the government to buy land near transit hubs for housing and community services. What impact would that make, do you think? I think that the Minister of Transport's idea of having these, these spaces is really important. I think that it, it would be a positive move forward. Uh, good quality housing is important for this population and for all of us for that matter. Um, but I really do believe that we have to have close to major public spaces um, centers, uh, one-stop centers, small spaces that we can treat this this population. And I think it's really important for all Canadians to understand that those living homeless, by and large, are not a threat to public safety. In fact, they're at greater risk uh, than the general population. We have a very small group of individuals within this cohort, which are uh, um, a concern for public safety. And uh, we have to think of a way of more uh, adequately and effectively servicing and helping this this small cohort of uh, those living on the street or, or near living on the street mm -hmm. suffering from addiction and mental health and other traumas. What other changes would you like to see specifically made to make public transit safer? Well, I think the challenge is, is when we increase security presence on the transit system itself, it's going to push um, a, a, a group of people into the surrounding neighborhoods. So we're going to be displacing uh, people as opposed to addressing people. So I think we need to find spaces 
uh, for individuals that currently are occupying these public spaces such as transit. I think we have to rethink how we deliver service, uh, health care services, social services to this population. And uh, But I do think enforcement and um, uh, and security is a critical component of this, but it's a multifaceted solution. There's many, many moving parts that need to be addressed. We've heard from some transit workers who say that you will rarely see security or uh, transit police on this system, but how realistic is it to have more security on systems which stretch across very large areas, whether it be in Toronto, Calgary, or, or here across Metro Vancouver? Well, it's, it's a significant challenge. And like I said, I think that uh, an interim solution or an interim, not a solution, but an interim approach will require an increase in security presence. But we have to understand that we're going to displace people and that the root causes, such as what uh, Minister Fleming in British Columbia has proposed, we need to have more ideas like that coming forward. And we need to sit, we need to bring uh, these services together. I think one of the problems that I've identified this from people living on the streets is that our our social service delivery at the street level is a patchwork of primarily volunteer driven not for profit organizations they're they're loosely connected to one another um, the oversight is is somewhat minimal um, it's it is an expensive model of delivery I think we have to rethink how the model itself is done and I think provincial governments are really probably should consider if it's feasible for for municipal and provincial governments to come together to deliver these services as opposed to reliance on not-profits so there's a coordination that there's more uh, uh, networking um, and that there's more efficacy in, in this approach and understanding the whole process that has to be in place and that there has to be a connection uh, between every layer as someone uh, moves toward recovery but we're talking about people who are in crisis right now and we we, we unfortunately uh, in a point of crisis it's a security response that we need but we have to go beyond that otherwise mm -hmm. it's just a revolving door we're just going to keep seeing this right. Kelly Sundberg an associate professor of criminology in the Department of Economics Justice and Policy Studies at Mount Royal University thanks for joining us thanks for having me have a great day